Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, we'll start with the Fed minutes. Sure. Look, I think that the Fed minutes, the Fed has a lot of latitude here. Uh, they can focus on low inflation and say they want to do nothing, or they can focus on the idea that, listen, it has nothing to do with inflation. It has to do with the fact that the economy is strong enough that we got to get back to normalized rates. And that's what they're going to do, which is why I think the banks are still a good place to be. We're making some moves and action alerts on the banks. you got to stay tuned. Mm. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that they've had a monster run, anticipating the fact that the Fed minutes, I think, are going to show that they've got great latitude. You can't keep going up on the same news as the C-car and mm. bank rates and, and interest rates going higher. But remember, the Fed's in the cap, you know, the Fed, Fed's got a, is in a great position here. And they waited, and congratulations to Janet Yellen. It made a lot of sense. And those Fed minutes are out at 2 p.m. Eastern. And speaking of the banks, Italy is taking control of uh, Monte de Paschi. Yeah, now Monte de Paschi is uh, my bank, frankly, in Italy, and I do some business in Italy. <laughs> Geez, I'll tell you, the Italian banks, are, are now they're starting to come together. Unicredit um, with that massive recapitalization. Monte Paschi, which is such a major bank, fourth largest, but had been the single bank because it's the oldest in the world, uh, was a bank is a bank that I use. And I think that people have to recognize the banking system in Italy is very much like 2009 in our country. So this recapitalization is going to be able to restart uh, what I think is an Italian economy that is, remember, they have the third largest bank uh, bond market in the world. The Italian economy has made no progress. If you if you get them get lending and it's all cash economy, if you get lending in Italy and you get a more streamlined government, less regulation. The regulation there is horrendous. Trust me. Then I think you'll see that economy really roar because the tourism is incredibly strong. All right, and then back here in the U.S., of course, President Trump heading to that G20 summit. Yeah, I mean, I think that Trump in these settings tends to be a little less confrontational. I think he feels like he wants to be a statesman. Um, I don't think that uh, he can solve the North Korean situation with these people because everyone's pretty toothless uh, until I think that the ICBMs are, are pointing toward them. All right, and then Vantiv planning to acquire Worldplay. It's rather amazing. Vantiv is an outfit that was flying under the radar screen, uh, like many of the payments processors, where there's been just tremendous merger after merger after merger. Remember, this is a spinoff of Fifth Third, and it ends up besting J.P. Morgan. Didn't want to pay what they what they paid. Rather incredible. J.P. Morgan will probably spend more money buying back its stock, um, I, I, or uh, giving a bigger dividend. But um, this is a, a deal that reminds you that how valuable PayPal and Square are. Square, remember. Uh, you, reflected a very downbeat IPO market, not unlike what we have right now. And it's finally coming into its own. It is remarkable in terms of its, we use Square at Bar San Miguel. Uh, we use one of their functions. It's remarkable how under uh, served the small, medium sized businesses are when it comes to giving small credit. That Square's, uh, one of Square's jobs and Square's just growing remarkably. PayPal has the best growth, but it's too big to be acquired. All right, now there's a report in the Wall Street Journal about Disney Channel losing subscribers. Yeah, I think that's important because I think Disney has had an unlucky streak here uh, that was uh, punctuated oddly by a New York Post story suggesting that Verizon might buy Disney, which would really kind of wreck Verizon's balance sheet. I question, by the way, uh, putting out a note today in Action Alert uh, about uh, Alphabet. I think people who are watching, who's, uh, please check your email. We're going to do a lot of things. Had a lot of things to say on Monday. Uh, but I think that um, Disney, uh, uh, Disney is the last thing Verizon can do after it just bit off uh, Yahoo, where I don't even think there's, there's anything going there. Um, I, Bob Iger has been a Teflon man when it comes to both ESPN and it comes to uh, to this children's network, in part because of the amazing work he's done with themes, theme parks, and with movies. Uh, I don't know when ESPN is going to start being able to count what's going on on your cell phone. But I think when they do, you'll realize that maybe the costs are coming down and it's not as negative. I remain long-term a supporter of the stock of Disney. Okay, and then Actual Alerts Plus holding Apple. There was a note out with Citi saying there could be a buying opportunity. Yeah, look, I think that all of tech, we put out interesting comments today. All of tech has sold off. It's a little too early to mount a big rally because the days are long. Uh, uh, but I, I point, point out to people that there are real reasons to own tech. Uh, and there's real reasons, by the way, not to own as much oil as we do for Action Alerts. We put an interesting memo out yesterday, uh, and that's Volvo. Uh, Volvo's mm. change to going all electric reminds you that the future is not gasoline. I do believe that the, that the oils that we have are the best in a bad neighborhood. Um, and I do think that oil inventories tomorrow and the Baker Hughes recount are going to show that because there isn't enough pipe out of the Permian, a lot of the drilling that's been going on is fruitless. 
you can't transport the stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the Permian's almost overloaded. The only uh, pipe that still has room is Magellan mm -hmm. <laughs> MMP, which we own for Action Alerts and had a very big week last week. Uh, and I, I'm watching to see where that stock goes. You mentioned electric cars. Goldman Sachs is out with a note with, for Tesla cutting its price target. Yeah, now that was a very interesting note because Tesla, uh, Goldman was the banker and they cut the price target, but it's now 180. A uh, little unrealistic. I, I, what I did note that was of interest in that uh, in that report was that they think that inventory is a problem, and a lot of that is because, of course, the market's frozen by the the Model Three that's coming out. I don't know. Uh, I read that note and I said that. One thing we've always felt that was good about Tesla was the demand side. Remember, Tesla could come out with something about China or the Gigafactory, and everyone will forget why they sold it. It remains a battleground stock that I cannot have an edge on. It's the only one, by the way. I mean, I'll tell you to buy Amazon. I have no problem telling. It's a cold stock, but it's also got a web service business that is worth maybe a huge part of the market cap. But I, Tesla is just a battleground, and I, you know, it, it's great to watch. It's terrible to be involved in. And staying with cars on Mad Dash on Squawk in the Street, you talked about O'Reilly. Yeah, now O'Reilly, this is something that begs more work. Uh, O'Reilly, AutoZone, and uh, this whole contingent, including advanced auto parts, ha has always been very solid in terms of its growth. I wonder whether there doesn't have to be some consolidation in that industry now. Uh, I bought the idea that the sales were weaker uh, because we had a mild winter. That doesn't extend into the spring. Um, I have to do more work. I do not understand why these stocks are, uh, why these companies are performing as poorly as they are, given how consistent they've been. And AutoZone's been a big buyer of its stock. Advanced Auto Parts is run by a guy who's the who's chairman is uh, is, is uh, an art, you know, a, a, a so-called raider. Um, and, and I look at that at Jeff Smith. Uh, and and I, I look at that and I say to myself, now wait a second, this group has got to start doing some merging. These are big companies, but we don't need all of them. Uh, and I do think that there is uh, mergers on the horizon, but I won't recommend stocks based on takeover when their fundamentals still require more number cuts and more downgrades, which is what awaits us with AutoZone, O'Reilly, and Advanced Auto Parts. All right, and then on stop trading, you talked about Diebold Next Door. Yeah, I've had them on the on Mad Money. They've got the single best system, may, uh, maybe rivaling Amazon, to be able to make it so that you have uh, 360 when you go to a store. In other words, if you buy and put it on Apple, say, and you don't need checkers. And they uh, talked uh, very extensively about that when they were on Mad Money, but they still have a core business that involves, you know, cash machines and doing some software for banks, so that's why NCR is down too. So it took people by surprise because there's a lot of people in there for the pizzazz of the checkerless shopping technology they have and forgot the basics, which is that look out, they still have to deal with banks and what they call complex transactions. Very disappointing. Both Diebold, Nixdorf, and uh, the incredible O'Reilly were stocks that people kind of felt had been consistent um, of late, and they clearly weren't. All right, Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much Thank as you. always. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.